Okay, the first question on this quiz or number 40 in our series is which of the following is false? So I'd like you to pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. So the correct answer here is E, all of the above are true. And I've given you a list of some common square roots that you should know. So hopefully you got E as the correct answer, but if not, this might be something to add to your notes. Okay, next question. It says, while shopping, John bought a new pair of shoes for $65.99 which were on sale for 60% of the original price. What was the original price of the pair of shoes rounded to the nearest whole number? So pause the video, you know the drill, try this out, and then we'll go over it. So if you already have a way that you like to deal with percents, then that's totally fine. But if not, here's one kind of formula you can use and you won't get this on your test. So if you want to do it this way, you'd be best to memorize this, but it's is over of equals percent over 100. We can pretty much right off the bat know that we're going to have to put a variable in for that word of. And a variable is just a, another word for an unknown. If we don't know what something is, we just put a letter in it in math. So I put this x down here in the formula, right where the of should go. Now what about is? What am I going to put up there? Well, let's see. She bought a pair of shoes for $65.99. So that is what I'm going to put in here for $65.99 because we want to know what percent of that original price. The original price is $65.99. And for our percent in the formula, it's hopefully pretty easy. We've got 60% right here. So we just need to put 60 right here into the formula and we just leave the 100 as it is. And like I said, this is not the only way to do this question here but this is just one way to do it. And so now what I would do is I would say, well, let's, we want to get the X by itself on one side of the equation here. So what I can do is I can multiply this side by X. So the X is canceled out. Whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other. So I have to multiply by X over here. That would leave me with 65.99 equals 60 times X divided by 100. So next what I could do is take this 100 and multiply both sides by 100. And what happens if I do that? Well, 100 is going to cancel off of this side and I'm going to have to multiply by 100 up here. So let me rewrite this whole thing now. So rewriting it would give me 65.99 times 100 equals 60X. So the last step would be to get rid of the 60 here. I'd have to divide by 60 on both sides. All right. So when I do that, that is going to give me X. So all I would have to do is just throw this in the calculator and it's gonna give me what X is equal to. And so what I got was 109.98, which rounded to the nearest whole number gives me 110. And that's the correct answer. So if you had trouble with this, here's the solution. You can go ahead and pause the video, take your time on the solution. Then when you're ready, keep moving. Okay, here's the next question for you. What is the probability of Sally drawing a blue marble from a jar with nine blue marbles, seven red marbles, one yellow, and 10 green. So pause the video and I'd like you to try this and then we'll go over it. Okay, so basically for a probability question, we need to first identify what we wanna find here, which is the probability of drawing a blue marble from a jar. Now, how many blue marbles are there? Well, it says that there's nine blue marbles. So I wanna start with that. And so then what I wanna do is add up the total number of marbles here and I'm just gonna do a division. So we have nine blue, so I'll put a nine here for the blue. It says seven red, so I'm gonna add a seven here to represent the seven red and one yellow. So I'm going to put a one here to represent that one yellow and 10 green. So let me add these up in my calculator and I'll rewrite this. So I have nine over 27. And so the answer choices here are given in fractions, which is important to note. Uh, sometimes they'll be given to you in, a, in form of a decimal. Sometimes you'll get fractions. It's just kind of luck at the draw. But in this case, all I would want to do is simplify this down. So hopefully you see that I can divide the top number and the bottom number by nine. Nine divided by nine is just one. 27 divided by nine is what? Hopefully you know that it's three. And so if you had trouble with this, then what I highly recommend for you to do is to go ahead and pause the video right now, take your time on the solution, and then when you're ready, go ahead and move on. Okay, next question here. I'll let you pause the video right now and take a stab at this and then we'll go over it. Okay, let's get right into this one now. So here you have to use what's called the FOIL method and the F stands for first. So basically you'd start a problem like this by looking at the first terms, which are 2x and 3x. So you're going to multiply those together. Now, 
What is two times three? Two times three is six. X times X is X squared. And this is a six, it's supposed to say six X squared. I know my handwriting is a little bit funny here. That takes care of the first. And so let me write this right here. We've got foil here. So we did the first already. And next we move on to our O. The O stands for outer. So we wanna multiply the two outermost things. So we've got two X and 11 X. And we're gonna multiply those. And I'm gonna add it up right here. So what is two times 11? Two times 11 is 22. And we'd have to bring the X along for the ride. So we have six X squared plus 22 X. That takes care of the outer. Next, we wanna do the inner two terms. So we've got our negative one, very important to bring the negative along for the ride here, and three X. So what is negative one times three X? That is negative three. Of course, we have to keep the X along for the ride here too. Next, we have to move on to the last. So the last two things that we didn't multiply together yet are negative one and positive 11. And a negative times a positive gives us a negative and it's gonna end up with negative 11. And then we have to do 22 minus three. You could also think of that as 22 plus negative three, but I think it's easier just to think about it this way. But this would be 19, and so D would be the correct answer here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough room to fit an entire solution up on the screen here, so I'm just showing you a little graphic here that you might wanna add into your notes and spend some time on if you're having trouble with this. And then when you're ready, we'll move on to the next question. Okay, the next one's a little challenging here. Number 44 says, which of the following is false? A, B, C, D, or E? Pause the video, try this out, and if you're stuck and you have no idea, don't worry, we'll go over it. Okay, let's go over this. So actually here, everything is correct, obviously, except for D. And the reason D is wrong is because whenever you see a scenario like this, right? Really, this is not the same as A raised to the fifth power. It's the same as A raised to the power of one over five. So that's what's wrong with D. And rather than reteach this, if you had trouble with this, I would refer you to my video where I talk about power rules. You can see that down below, you can click that link and it breaks down all these power rules. But for now, I just recommend you memorize A, B, C, and E. Obviously know that D was wrong here. And unfortunately, I can't fit a whole solution on the screen for this, but We'll move on to the next question right now. Okay, next question. How many inches are in 68 feet? There are 12 inches in one foot. So pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so let's start with 68 feet here. And so what we're gonna have to do is we have to look at the information 12 inches in one foot, and we want to set it up, and we're gonna multiply here. We wanna set this up so that the units are gonna cancel out. So let me explain what I mean by that. We want to put the one foot on the bottom here and we wanna put the 12 inches on the top here. And the reason why we wanna set it up this way is because feet divided by feet are gonna cancel out. So then you would just do 68 times 12 and the answer is gonna be in inches. And the answer is 816. I know I explained this kind of fast, so if you had trouble with this as always, here's the solution, you can take your time. Or this is the first part of the solution anyway, so you can take your time with the first part of the solution, pause the video if you'd like to. Okay, let me show you the next part of the solution. So here's the second part of the solution right here, and then I also have the math right here that I did to get the answer down at the bottom. So you can take your time, like I said, pause this, go back, rewind, whatever you need to do to understand this. As soon as the next video in the series is ready, you'll be able to click the link right here. If you missed the previous videos in the series, you can find the links down below in the description, and you can watch those now if you'd like to. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that your test goes well for you, and let me know how you do. I'm sharing for you.